As Casita Maria celebrates their 90th anniversary, they present the solo exhibition by Chilean multidisciplinary artist and Casita Maria's teaching artist, Maria Luisa Portuondo Vila, titled Animal Studies, dedicated to Maria Luisa's late dog, Rufian. Animal Studies is a series of watercolors, soft pastels, and oil paintings depicting migrating giraffes and a flock of sheep finding safety in numbers, leading the viewer into moments of self-reflection and power and strength within numbers. And joining us to share more is Casita Maria's artistic director, Gail Jairo, and multidisciplinary and teaching artist, Maria Luisa Portuondo Vila. Hello and welcome. Hello, Rina. Welcome back, Gail. Thank you, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you for always supporting Casita Maria on your show. Always, always, and you know, 90 years is, is you know, that's a huge accomplishment, right? Yeah. That longevity, so it's, it's important for us to share with our viewers that these places, these institutions exist right here in our backyard. So thank you for making sure that it stays sustainable and uh, and also that we're highlighting new artists regularly, which is why we always bring you on as the director of art, right? So um, let's talk about this next, this new exhibition that's already on display. And, um, and I always like when you share how you choose the art that's gonna be curated. So how did you choose this particular set? Well, Maria Luisa has been teaching uh, young people at Casita Maria for a couple of years now. And she had, uh, she was participating in a group show a couple of years ago and asked me if I would go see the exhibition. And so I checked it out. I was interested in her work, wanted to learn more, viewed her website, and I saw this work about Rufian and it really resonated with me. Um, it takes about a year, year and a half for me to be able to curate a show with an artist. So we really enter into a relationship. Uh, there's a lot of conversation, you know, uh, bouncing ideas around, doing a studio visit, and then, you know, working on how we're actually going to install the work. Um, this exhibition uh, is really expansive. Um, it, you know, as you mentioned, it's, um, you know, a, a number of different approaches to art making. And also, Maria Luisa has been working on the artwork for about three years as a way to, you know, heal from her late dog, Rufian, passing away. And through this process, it's been really amazing to see her artwork transform, and also, you know, from what I understand, it was a, a healing process as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into that a little deeper. Thank you, Rina. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And thank you for your transparency through your artistry. Okay. It's really remarkable. So. I have not had the privilege of going to the actual gallery, but I've seen the uh, images of mm -hmm. what is on display. And I got to tell you, um, and I say privilege because I'm sure it's a different experience being in person versus seeing it on photographs. Mm -hmm. And even with what I experience in photographs, I can tell that um, well, your different styles as well as the different emotions and, and also, I mean, I, I think you guys are very, very particular in even painting the walls to match the scenario. Mm -hmm. um, so um, just share with us what your process is in, 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 in the materials that you use. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I think this is my first solo exhibition of painting. Uh, I've been doing social art and community art projects for 10 years so far. And when my dog Rufian passed away, I really I couldn't go to Chile, so I really needed to just feel more relief, and I start painting him. And it was beautiful when Gail invited me because she was like, "I'm into this project in specific," and I said, "Okay, so I'm gonna develop more of this." And I start looking into materials, you know, into all the um, I don't know, like visual arts techniques that I had left behind during these 10 past years and it was very exciting actually because also I could match all my work with Casita as a teaching artist with my practice as an artist and I started developing like first watercolor then I said okay why I can't just teach my kids pastel and I can just do pastel too in my exhibition so at the same time I was teaching them pastel I was you know like practicing my pastel technique and then I thought, well, maybe I can just paint some oil too. 
on canvas or on wood and I opened the spectrum of all my, you know, like possibilities in visual arts. It was very interesting for me as a process too because it's not something that I'm used to do normally, you know? Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, thank you for sharing that, right? Yeah. So how long have you been a teaching artist at Casita Maria? Two years so far. This is my second year. All right. So let's just back up a little bit and let's just share a little bit more about your relationship to Rufian, mm -hmm. right? Because you say you couldn't get to him, right? So what, what does that mean? Rufian was in, in Chile? Rufian was in Chile, yeah. Right. And I understand that Rufian was meant to just visit and ended up being your companion for 15 years? Yeah, I found him on the street. In Chile, there's a lot of street dogs. So I found him, uh, him on the street, a uh, rainy day. I put him in my backpack. He was a little puppy. And I was living with my mom at that time. And I said, the only way my mom is going to accept this dog if, is I lie. So I went there. <laughs> I said, I have to cry. Uh -huh. So I knocked the door with my mom. I said, my mom, Rufian, you know, like I just saw this dog and somebody crushed him. And they didn't do anything. We need to keep him for one night, please. And she was like, OK, one night. And Rufian stayed for 5,300 nights. Wow. He counted it in nights. Yeah, because it, there is a book. Like, I do artist books, too. So I make an artist book for Rufian. And, yeah, I count the nights, 5,600 nights. And so uh, it, it's apparent in your work. And once again, I'm speaking from the perspective of experiencing it just through photos that you were very, very connected, deeply connected oh, to yeah. your dog. Um, and so I, I started just observing like your, um, your connection to animals in general, right? Because the exhibition also highlights giraffes and sheep mm -hmm. and, um, and, and also different parts of the world, I wanna say, even though you're not necessarily mentioning them, uh -huh. you kind of like, it, it's like you're transcending time and space and, and location through the art. Um, oh. through the perspective of experiencing animals, right? And as a teaching artist, I, I would imagine that's like a wonderful lesson for the, the, the children to actually learn from, right? Because it's, yeah. it's experiential learning, yeah. right? Not only in the artistry, but in the emotional aspect of it too. Mm -hmm. And also during this time, I, because I was working with animals and animals were so present in my life, I was all the time, you know, like insinuating animals in my classes and I realized how much they linked, they bond with animals in general, kids, you know, like kids love animals and they love to talk about animals and they love to, to, to make things about animals. So I said, okay, I think this is a great topic also for Casita, right? Like I feel the kids are going to, are going to, be more related to this topic than you know like another we're looking at some images right now of uh are these like different boxes put together uh again this is what i mean like you guys have to go in person to actually experience yeah, these are individual panels of paper with pastel on them and then they're hung from the wall spaced about four to six inches and then it comes together in a full grid it's to beautiful. create this it's called the great herd and uh and in, in talking to maria luisa she was explaining how you know this great herd is a collection of animals that you would never actually see you know living and coexisting together right yeah. and and so that also speaks to relationships right mm -hmm. and um and also really the the lesson in in what i was picking up is really about our coexistence yeah and then what i because I started painting Rufian, right? And then I started feeling more relief. And after one year, I said, OK, now I want to paint animals, just animals, not just Rufian. And when I started painting animals, I said, I had the sensation that we share um, interspecies memory, right? And I had this concept in my mind, the interspecies memory. And I wanted to understand, like, what is this about? What is the interspecies memory about? Right? Um, when, while I was painting them, I said, okay, there's something, there are three things that we both recognize, like memory. One is the herd, right? Like we need 
to be part of a community. Right, it's almost like a, a, a tribe, a culture, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we are not isolated people. When we were in COVID, it was super hard. Like we love to belong. Commune, yes. Yeah, yes. belong to yeah. some, mm -hmm. something, right? right? So that's something that we shared for sure. Then the migration, right? right? Like animals migrate. Right. Not all of them, right. but they, most of them. And we too. Right. I'm a migrant. Right. Like, yeah. And the other one was motherhood. Like, right, like mammals and... Power Every to animal. the women, power to the women. Yeah, <laughs> like motherhood is like super like, you know, uh, obvious. And, and motherhood doesn't come solely to, from birthing a child. It, it's Exactly. It's, right. I taking care, like that, like taking care of someone right. or something right. deeply. Right. Like me right? with Rufian. Like me with Rufian. Yeah. And actually, yeah, because Rufian, um, I feel like Rufian was, when, when Rufian passed away, was the first time I felt this, Maybe it was his mother, or I, I had this sensation of, you know, like, motherhood, I don't know. Yeah. It yeah. was the first time I felt that in my life. And so, just out of curiosity, because I saw there were, like, little tags that kind of uh, expressed, like, different, I guess, positions or poses that Rufian. And so, I was just curious, like, what that really, what, I guess, what you're trying to convey in the variations like just being spread uh like that in little tags i mean i, I again I, i'm trying i'm visualizing it and i'm trying to like really dig into your thoughts and, and try to figure out like okay why did she use this material to convey okay. this story yeah that's very practical a uh, decision i wanted to be with rufian the whole time for me it was like why i couldn't be with him when he was for me his entire life unconditional love and the moment that he was dying I couldn't be there physically I knew he needed me and I couldn't be there right so then I felt that I wanted to be with him all the time so the little gap because for, for the for the people like I paint 1,000 times Rufian in this little tax and the little tax were because I wanted to carry them easily I wanted to paint him in the commute uh, when I was waiting for something and a big paper or a normal paper it was going to be so tricky to manage. So I said, okay, I'm going to use this. And I didn't know the outcome. I didn't know how this was going to work. And actually put it together in an installation was a very difficult decision. I didn't know how to do it because in for, uh, for one side is Rufian painted in different poses. Right. And by the other side is a collage and it's like poems in Spanish, not poems, but sentences, words related to my relationship with him, right? In Spanish. You know, I, I'm, I'm immersed in everything she's saying because, because, you know, I can see that you're really sharing your healing process. And that's the other part to this. Um, you know, right now we're dealing with a mental health crisis, and I would imagine that mm. exploring this with the next generation is providing a sense of therapy, not only for you as an artist, but for the next generation and understanding that those relations. Yeah, totally. Yeah, over the last year we've been um, transitioning into a healing community at Casita Maria and including expressive art activities in all of our art studios. So I also see, you know, this exhibition, which, you know, the gallery we use as a, a teaching tool, you know, as a really beautiful example of how art can help one heal. Um, and then to have Maria Luisa as the teaching artist to hear it firsthand, not translated through me or somebody else in the, in the art department, but to hear it directly from Maria Luisa that art can heal. And so are you, are there tours offered for just general public or is this just for the uh, students of Casita Maria? No, anybody can just uh, stop in Monday through Friday, 9 to 6 p.m. If you want a tour, um, you can email marketing at casitamaria.org and set up a tour. Um, you know, we can arrange the tour to be with uh, either myself, somebody else from the art department, or Maria Luisa, depending on scheduling. Um, but everybody's welcome to see the exhibition. And there's plenty of time, Rina, even you can come. Uh, we're open through March. March 6th. Nice. March 6th of 2025. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's plenty of time. Yeah. So if a school were watching and they wanted to make arrangements, they would just email marketing at Casita Maria? That's correct. 
Mm -hmm. Nice. And so as far as becoming a student of yours, how would they do so? The what, sorry? Becoming a student of yours. Oh. Um, I'm Come to Casita Maria. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, see, but I don't yeah, know what that sorry, process is. Like, yeah, right? yeah. It, because that's not marketing at Casita Maria. Right. No, I mean, people can just stop in. You can see Nairobi in the education yeah. office, or you can go on our website at casitamaria.org on the education drop down menu, and there's additional information on how to apply. We currently have programming for K through 8. Monday through Friday. And we have an amazing program. We are now like doing some modifications, right? And we have two hours per group. It's like we have plenty of time with the kids to teach them and give them an amazing experience. You know, like just not giving them tools for making art, but also to understand creativity in different ways. I'm so proud of what we're doing, I think. Mm -hmm. well, and we're, we're, proud, we're proud of you, and we're really proud to share this with our viewers. and. And we're thankful that you brought it here to us. And, um, and congratulations Thanks. to you on this solo yeah, exhibition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're out of time. I know, I know, I know. We can go on and on about Yeah, we this. can. Yeah, because it's beautiful, uh, the sentimental aspect of it, the coexisting aspect of it, the therapeutic aspect of it, and the uh, mindfulness of it, Thanks. most importantly. All right, ladies, I know. I know. Okay. Thanks. Gail Heidelberg, hard to you. Yeah, do it one more time. Right? Oh. Yay, we're doing the hard stuff. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's how we're going. That's how we're going out this segment. You guys, Gail Heidel, Casita Maria's artistic director. And once again, Maria Luisa Portuondo Vila, multidisciplinary artist and Casita Maria's teaching artist. And we were speaking everything animal studies, which is currently on display now through March 2025 at Casita Maria Gallery. And if you're interested, in more information, you can visit casitamaria.org. All right, stay tuned. There's more open after the break.